Hello and welcome to this special episode of The Point with me, Liu Xin, coming from Urumqi, capital of northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. I have a very special guest today who is also in Xinjiang, but he's busy in the field, so he can't join me on site. He is Raz Galo, founder of a video channel called Why China, which is uh, all about contents created by people around the world about their understanding and their life with in China. So, Raz, let's uh, get it started. Hey, Raz, how are you doing? Hi, thank you so much for reminding me. I'm doing great. I'm here in the cotton field in Xinjiang. What's, what's happening behind you? As you can see, this is the planting season of cotton in Xinjiang. Right now, everyone here is starting to plant the seeds. And as you can see on this side, it's already some of the seeds already been planted on the ground. And mm -hmm. some of it is already plowed and it's ready to be planted. And right behind me is the machine. It's kind of a magic machine. You barely need, you don't even need people. It does it all on its own. It automatically plants the seeds, puts on all the thing related, covers it with thing against the wind and the rain. It's really cool. So I'm really here in the middle of that field yeah. in a county in the western side, western region of Xinjiang, near Akosu. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Avati region, Avati County. It's a very small little county, very far away from uh, uh, Akasu, but it's where all the cotton fields are, and I made it here. Before you go on, help us understand how do you come up with the idea to come to Xinjiang and experience the place by yourself? Uh, some people even doubt that foreigners can travel to Xinjiang freely. Help us understand oh. the story. Oh, well. Uh, I've been in China for more than 12 years, and I've been to so many places. And there's only very few places I haven't visited yet. And Xinjiang has always been one place I always wanted to visit. Actually, a lot of my foreign friends themselves, they've been here. My, other, my little brother himself, he visited here around two and a half years ago as well. And it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a myth. It's a, it's a myth about foreigners can come visit. It's, it's really easy to come and visit. Yeah. And then myself, I just never found a chance to go until recently where a lot of my friends again from all around the world are like, Raz, I really wish you could go and come and see Xinjiang. It's time to, for me to come and travel and see the local life here and understand a bit of how things um, are going here because that's kind of what I do for the past five years or so. I've been traveling and vlogging and recording my life mm -hmm. here and interacting with people from different uh, areas and places in China. Yeah. And Xinjiang is just one of these places I would love to learn about more. And here I am. Uh, oh. Do you mind? Do you mind give us a virtual experience by climbing into that beautiful machine behind you? If it is uh, okay oh. with the signal, is that too far away? I uh, know I can. I can walk there. I can extend <laughs> a bit on the way. Yeah. As you see, actually, this is the right. This is the, exactly the beginning of when they start planting the cotton seed, mm -hmm. and everything is done actually very automatically. So most of the work is done through this machine who is actually controlled by a lot of technology features that you firstly don't need a lot of people to make it happen. Mm -hmm. The last two days has been a bit rainy, so yeah. they've been, they haven't really planted many seeds, but today the weather is back again, as you can see, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And they're going to plant all the seeds today. Now, I've arrived here at the machine here behind yeah. me. Show us the machine. Um, you can, yeah, you can turn the camera you. around. What, what's the yeah, name? Yeah. Yeah, what's, what's the so, brand name? Zoom Lion. Brand name. Oh, Zoom Leon. Like, Zoom yeah, Leon. I'm not sure about the brand so far. Yeah. I really just arrived here a couple, like, maybe like 30 minutes ago. It was a long trip. Okay. But as you can see, this thing does this whole machine here. Uh -huh. It does everything by putting the, planting the seeds in the ground, mm -hmm. putting the Diguan, which is like the water flow system, and then later covering it with a plastic thing, which gives you this kind of effect. Mm -hmm. so I you can see. see. Everything done by the machine. I see. Now, wow. this entire thing, actually, in a really cool way, is all controlled and monitored by a little drone technology can you show us? placed on top of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can show, show us you. a little bit closer up. Yeah. I can go up quickly and show you. <laughs> Don't. Do you know how to drive? <laughs> uh, everything is controlled here. I cannot drive, but I can show you up here. You I see? see. This thing? Yeah. Thing on top, actually, it reads exactly your location, and wow. it, it literally drives the, the machine alone. You don't need even a person here. There's, there's not many, there's not many farmers here working it. You only need one or two people for each field like this to work this machine, and it's just, it's kind of a, like, how do you call it, like a driverless. Uh huh. 
was the seat. And I, that really impressed me because I was surprised that most of the labor here on the field is all done by a machine. Hmm. And that's it. So that's kind of really cool. Technology. Uh, now, this is uh, planting season, right? Obviously, uh, the, the cotton pick picking season would be in autumn. Do they also use machines? Yeah, so um, to be honest, I just arrived here. I'm learning about it. I'm asking a lot of locals about the life here. And so yeah. far, what I learned is that in the last 10 years has seen a huge uh, uh, innovative change in the way they plant and even collect cotton. And um, one really little fact to tell you is that, for example, this entire field, for example, usually required before when it was all like more handmade farming was about, you would need around maybe 20 people to mm -hmm. and three days to complete the entire area here. But today you only need one day and less than three people and one machine to complete this entire field. So wow. the efficiency is increased times, times 10. And also means their income, their li livelihood, and in, in general, everything has just been automated to a very high degree. Exactly the number of the automatization, I'm not sure, but definitely its coverage of is higher and higher in the region. Even in this very far away farm, I'm really far away, deep into the western region of, the, the, of Xinjiang, and it's still very, very technologically innovative. And that's really uh, made me very impressed, to be honest. I didn't expect that. Uh, that's and, really great. To see. And the uh, yeah. telecommunication signal is also very good, huh? We see you. The quality is very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. And that's us. It's everywhere. You just see the telecommunication has been covered. The roads are connected everywhere. Um, it's really easy to get around, and it's, it's something that just makes the really fun place to travel as well. I really recommend people to travel here when they can. It's just and great. the food. <laughs> Oh, let's not talk the food we can talk about for hours. I just finished an amazing lunch mm. where I had so much types of lamb and fish and some noodles. I'm sure we'll gain weight and I don't mind it because it's just too good. <laughs> um tell yeah. tell me you must have enjoyed it too. Absolutely. I have to work very I have to work out very hard after I go back to Beijing. But uh, yeah, but I have my impressions. I want to know uh, for the city, for instance, what is your biggest impression? I mean, you must have also, you know, had some idea of the city, of the big cities. Uh, what w if I asked you to mention yeah. one thing, what would it be? I think as a city itself, I mean, it's much more developed than I thought it would be. Like you have everything you need. You have all the, um, all the malls and the hotels and the restaurants and the city is very clean and getting around is very easy. But then what really impressed me the most is not just the city as, as the fact that it's really built really well and it's really easy to get around. It's actually the people and the kindness of the people here is something that I was impressed by. It wasn't surprising, it was just impressive because when I get around and my first time here and you know, me as well as a, as a foreigner, you know, it's my first time, I got accepted here like as a local. People. They invite me to places, they show me around, they're nice to me, they smile a lot. And, and I felt that kind of made me feel a bit like home. And that's kind of a unique feeling when you came to a place and you kind of feel like, you know, it's really, you feel the kindness. And that's something that I think people sometimes undervalue. Kindness of people is something that's so important. And the people here in Xinjiang, the locals are extremely kind. And that's why I recommend people to come in. And I really think, to be honest, I, the last thing I want to say is that, you know, it gets really late like it only gets dark at like 10 p.m yeah it's really unique here that you like you're in you're so energetic all day and then you realize <laughs> it's already 10 p.m and you're like what well, it feels like 6 p.m when if you're back in like beijing or other cities so it's it's very the energy here is very special yeah I days think. are longer which is feels really cool so have a great time and i'm gonna go and hop on this car and Start planting the seeds with the farmers here. I envy yeah. you. Well, have a great time and uh, talk to you soon. Hi, everybody. I'm sitting in the driver cabin of a cotton planting machine in Hutubi County near Urumqi, capital of Xinjiang Weigo Autonomous Region. What's special about this machine is, look, it's automatic. It can be driverless. Exactly how it works, it's from the Beidou Satellite Navigation System that's developed by China. Let me show you exactly how it works.
come with me. So as I told you, this uses the Beidou satellite system and that white box up there is exactly how it receives signal. Now let me come down. Come here. So this is the monster and here it has several layer of uh, devices. This is where the cotton seeds go in. Come and take a look. Do you know how cotton seeds look like? Look, these are cotton seeds, okay? They will go into these boxes and then from these tubes they will go underneath into the ground. And then we have these plastic foil which will cover the cotton seeds and cover the soil. Underneath that we also have these black tubes which is where the irrigation system will be using. In the summer, it will give very targeted irrigation methods. And let's take a look of uh, what it has done so far. Look, this is, this is the way how it's going to look after it's planted. Where are the seeds? It has little holes that's been driven by the machine and the cotton seeds are supposed to be in there. And these soil over there will be used to cover to keep the plastic foil on the ground. This is the place where there is the highest level of mechanization in the whole of China, one of the places. And from planting to harvesting to fertilizing, everything, everything is using machines. But I have to tell you, this is only happening here in northern Xinjiang more, more often. In southern Xinjiang, there is not such a high level of mechanization. Still, some manual labor will be used but it's also because there, if you uh, grow very high quality cotton, people prefer to pick it ha manually because that will give, uh, give you better and higher quality harvest as well. That's my reporting from Hutubi County near Urumqi in Xinjiang Weigo Autonomous Region.